Hi, this is Miles Marie, the Soldier of Mary. Today, I am offering a tribute to the 60th anniversary of the apparitions of Our Lady at Garabandal, or rather, the apparition of the angel with which the apparitions at Garabandal commenced. In this video, I'm going to look at the state of the questions, the status questionis of Garabandal. I want to look at who the principal players are in the Garabandal movement today. I want to look at what we know about Garabandal and how our knowledge has increased over the last 60 years. I want to kind of give some indication for the next years ahead, how the phenomenon of Garabandal is going to play out. Today, if you're watching the day the video is released, this is the 60th anniversary of the apparition of the angel at Garabandal. So a quick summary of that apparition. The girls had been messing around. They'd been playing a little bit in the village square. And then two of them snuck off. You know, they snuck off and they thought they would uh, get up to a bit of mischief. And while they were sneaking off, the other two girls kind of found them. They managed to find them in the thicket. They were messing around and together they were kind of sitting around talking together and then they said well why don't we go over and take some of these apples from the tree the tree was in a garden apparently belonging to their teacher at school and some people say most people say that they went and stole these apples in some books about garabandal they like to draw a little parallel between the fall of adam and eve and the beginnings of the apparitions of Garabandal. But some don't because, you know, they don't want to make us think that we're talking about an, a, something similar to the fall because it immediately makes you think that just as the taking of the apple uh, and the fall of the first parents was belonging to the devil, we don't want to think too much about the devil at the beginning of the apparitions of Garabandal. So some other books suggest that, well, this tree was kind of anyone could have taken the apples from that tree. It wasn't so bad, really, after all. But anyway, the children take some apples and they start eating them. And then apparently there's a big sound of thunder. And with that sound of thunder, the girls have a kind of pang of conscience. That's what some accounts say. They start to think, maybe we shouldn't have taken those apples after all. And then they throw stones to the left-hand side. The idea being that the devil had in some way inspired this act of theft. And so by throwing stones to the left, they kind of get rid of the devil some books like to suggest that this wasn't just a superstitious thing but was kind of an act of contrition and so having made the act of contrition at that point the children one by one fall in ecstasy and they see an angel interestingly in conchita's diary she doesn't say they see an angel she says they see the angel it's really strange maybe someone that knows the Spanish of that day better than I do, will be able to you go know, confirm whether this is strange or not. But they say that they've seen El Angel, not Un Angel. I don't know, for me it seems strange. If I've seen an angel, I would say, oh, I've seen an angel. I wouldn't say I've seen the angel. Maybe it suggests to me that, that everyone knew that there was maybe an angel guarding the village. It's the angel that they've seen. Anyway, they see the angel, they're absorbed in prayer, and then they are, are impelled to run to the village. And as they run to the village, they're in tears. They're in tears and they meet some kids along the way and they say, why are you crying? And the girls say back, we're crying because we've seen the angel. And then, and then they go and they're outside the church kind of, you know, crying a bit. And then um, another teacher of theirs comes up to see them. Someone that's a catechist, I think, from the from the church comes up to see them and says, well, what's happened? And they say, we've seen the angel. And then the catechist says, let's go in the church and make a visit to the Blessed Sacrament in thanksgiving for this apparition. And then that's the beginning of the first apparition. A bit like at Fatima, there's a bit of a kickback from parents who aren't so pleased about this apparition. I mean, in particular, we have Conchita's mother. We know that she wasn't very happy because 
Conchita was meant to be home earlier. And so when Conchita gets in and she says to her mum, look, I've seen the angel. The mum is like, look, you've came back late, Conchita. And that's all I care about. You said you're meant to be back before dark and it's dark. Anyway, that's the first apparition. That's what we're mem remembering tonight or today. So now the state of the question. So 60 years have passed. What has happened? Well, key moments in these intervening years. So all of the children, they grew up, they got married, they moved out of Garabandau. The only one who lives nearby is Mary Cruz. She lives up the road, I think, in Oviedo. And now, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately for her, we don't know, only God knows, Mary Loli has passed from this world into eternity. That happened about five years ago now, I think. Other significant facts, we have had the death of Padre Pio, who was meant to see the miracle before he died. We have had the death of John Paul II. Again, it was widely expected that he was going to be the last pope before the end of times, and that at the end of his life, we would have had the warning, the miracle, that chastisement. Also significant events in the last 60 years. We've had Conchita giving a number of locutions. She made a locution saying a particular boy would become a priest. He never became a priest. She gave a prediction that a person who was disabled in Garabandal would be healed on the day of the miracle. That person has already passed away. She gave a prediction that Joey, Joey the Italian, uh, the Italian follower of Garabandal, who did so much work promoting Garabandal in America, that he would get his eyes back or would receive new sight on the day of the miracle. Again, he passed away before the miracle occurred. Those are all significant things that have happened over the last 60 years. Also over the last 60 years, Conchita has done a number of interviews for the BBC. I think there are two interviews for the BBC and one for an Irish television channel. In the last 20 years, she's essentially been silent, except for apparently delivering a couple of little messages through a guy called Glenn Hudson, who's got a Facebook page on Garabandal. And he's telling us that he's in communication with Conchita. And so I've included him in this video as one of the key players in the Garabandal movement today in this review, because he's telling us that Conchita communicates through him. But in actual fact, in the last 10 years, 15 years, he's only published one message from Conchita. And it doesn't cover any of the things really that we'd like her to address, such as some of the prophecies or that kind of thing. Instead, she gave some kind of little message in view of the global pandemic about a year and a half ago. So Glenn Hudson is the first of my key players in the Garabandal movement today. Maybe, as time goes on, he will have more messages from Conchita. He certainly is telling us quite frequently that he is in contact with her. So we should expect more things from him in the next years. Alongside Glenn, there's also another gentleman who runs a blog on Garabandal. And this man is known as Abiso. Abiso. And again, he's another individual who claims to have or seems to suggest he has a friendship with Conchita. His blog I quite like because I certainly agree with him in his analysis of Medjugorje and a lot of the things Aviso says on the state of the church are very prescient. He's a traditional Catholic and, a, and seems like a really good man. So his blog is a key factor in the Garabandal movement today and I like his blog because it has some speculation on Garabandal and it allows for a bit of critical thinking about the chronology of the apparitions and trying to work things out. Okay, the next key player in the Garabandal movement today, well it's more of a group and this is this is maybe should this is number one. I shouldn't have really mentioned the other two. This is number one. It's the order Ogar de la Madre. If anything has brought Garabandal to the attention of people around the world. It is the work of this order, El Hogar de la Madre, a Spanish order 
of priests, of monks, of religious. Well, I don't guess you wouldn't call them monks, brothers. So they are key because pretty much every bit of media on YouTube that is quality on Garabandal, and I mean in terms of documentaries and films, they have funded, they've produced them. There are the old documentaries, like the one that's showing in the background now, but the high quality stuff, it's by El Ogar. And the very name of the order means the home of the mother. It's a reference to Garabandal. There's not a lot written about the origins of this order, but it seems to me that the founder, Father Raphael, he had some kind of experience in Garabandal, and he is absolutely convinced of the truth of the apparitions at Garabandal. I've met a few guys in the order, a few priests, and I've also corresponded with them. I don't want to call them a cult of Garabandal. It's the word cult is not a friendly word, but they're an order whose members are convinced of the truth of Garabandal, and they put money and time into promoting Garabandal. The video, the film we had last year, Garabandal, Only God Knows, and the documentary, Garabandal, Unstoppable Waterfall, both produced by Logar de la Madre. Also, Father José Luis Saavedra, the author of the book Garabandal, Message of Hope, he's a member of that order. So this religious order today is a key player in the Garabandal movement. And that's only going to continue so. And their order is growing. God is blessing them with vocations, it seems. And so Garabandal is going to be more and more promoted. What you'll notice is a lot of their material, and this is a good thing for me, a fair bit of their material is shying away from the warning miracle chastisement uh, chronology and is reinterpreting Garabandal more as the home of the mother. That is, Garabandal as a place where the children recognize Mary truly as their spiritual mother. And they felt a nearness to her and they felt her motherly love for them. A motherly love that is for all the baptized, all those in the state of grace experience in a real way her motherly intercession and care. Of course, some of the material does talk about the prophetic aspect of Garabandal. But certainly in Father José Luis's book, those prophetic aspects are really quite small in, in, in his study. So, Ogar de la Madre, very important in the Garabandal movement today. Other figures. There are a number of YouTubers out there that are trying to give us a chronology of the events, looking at all of the apparitions out there, grand, unified, prophetic chronologies. There's After the Warning by this guy Bruce Sire, I think his name is, and I notice he's spamming a lot of YouTube comment boxes. I have to delete him quite a bit because he's spamming, trying to get people to buy his book After the Warning all the time. But then there's also Countdown to the Kingdom, They're those guys trying to do a grand unified theory of all the apparitions and private revelations out there. Along with them, you've got this guy, Antonio Yagui, or is it Yagué, a Spanish YouTuber who has made a load of PowerPoint videos on the Garabandal and apparitions chronology. And again, he's got some kind of weird views because a lot of his views are telling us that there's going to be astral phenomena that help us to predict when the warning's going to be. He took this stuff that Conchita said about the idea that the warning is a bit like two stars crashing together. He kind of has just taken that one literally. And so he's always looking up into the sky and telling us when the warning's going to be based on the movement of stars. He's also got some strange things about the warning. He thinks that after the warning, the world is going to spin in the opposite direction. He's, I've mentioned him in because he's got a big following on YouTube. Loads of people are watching his Spanish videos, so he's a key player. Another key player is another Spanish YouTuber, uh, Cesar. Uh, Cesar para Jesucristo. He's a guy who takes the prophecy of the popes quite seriously, or kind of seriously, because he believes that Garabandal informs us that Benedict, 
is the last pope until the warning miracle chastisement stuff takes place. And so he doesn't accept Francis as a true pope. Again, I'm mentioning him because he's got 60,000 viewers on YouTube now, I think. And Cesar, he's interesting because there's a nice video I found really funny, which purports to show Pope Benedict on a kind of prison tag system. So he's in the Vatican, but he's got this tag on and, and accidentally the Vatican kind of left the tag on him one day when they were letting him be recorded. But it's kind of a bit of evidence that, that the Pope, the real Pope, is a prisoner in the Vatican. And this imposter Freemason Bergoglio has taken over. And of course, this allows us to keep a kind of Garabandal chronology over the prophecy of the popes, because some people say that Conchita said, well, actually, John Paul I, he doesn't count because his reign's going to be really short. But in the earliest documents, she didn't say that. She said it's three popes, three popes remain, and then the things would have all gone down. But apparently later on she said, oh, I said three, but really I mean four because like one of them was going to reign for such a short time. But Cesar, he takes this seriously. And so he thinks that Pope Benedict is still the genuine Pope. I don't know what he's going to do when Pope Benedict goes into eternity. And let me just say for the record, I do believe Pope Francis is the true Pope. And I do not believe in Conchita's prophecy of the three popes. I think that's something that has proved to be false over the last 60 years. So to conclude, looking forward, not to the next 60 years, I don't know if I'd still be alive. If I'm still alive, then I'll be 95. So 60 years more of Garabandal. I don't think so. If you accept the chronology of Garabandal as true, Garabandal has got 20 years because Conchita has to tell us when the miracle is going to happen. She has to be alive for that one to tell the world. In those 20 years, what else could happen? We could have some writing or some announcements from Mary Cruz. We haven't had much from her. Maybe she will tell us some stuff about Garabandal. Maybe Jacinta will tell us something about Garabandal. Maybe the diary that Mary Loli apparently kept during the days of the apparitions will be released. There's all kinds of developments that can take place in the next 20 years. And I hope there will be more of a study of the early sources of Garabandal. That is the development of the idea of the warning. Because not many people realize, but the warning is first written about in a letter by Conchita in 1965. No one None of the children refer to the warning. There's no written document of them referring to the warning prior to 1965. Conchita does so in 1965. Two of the other children do so in the 70s in a magazine article. I'd like to see more of a study on the early sources of Garabandal so we can understand how this official chronology developed because so many people are focusing on this chronology. Personally, I hope we get away from the chronology and begin to see Garabandal more as this personal encounter between Our Lady and her children. The whole chronology stuff, I think it may be imaginary. And I think that it is a distraction from saving our souls, getting right with God, daily mass, daily rosaries, frequent confession. Maybe there's a chastisement coming. Certainly, a big thing is going to happen. That's our own individual judgments. That's what we need to focus on. Not some warning. Get evangelizing. Not waiting for some warning to convert your family. May Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.